In today's chess video, I am going to show you some powerful opening ideas and strategies in the king's gambit for both white and black. This is the king's gambit and if black takes this pawn, it's the accepted line for which I have already made a separate video. If you are aware of all the theory and you are confident enough, then accepting this pawn can be a good way to proceed. But if you don't want to go by the normal lines and you would rather like to surprise your opponent, then declining the gambit is a better idea. So in this video, we are going to focus on the declined variation where black does not take this pawn. And we'll discuss the four most popular responses by black. By the way, if he straight away plays queen h4 check, white simply blocks with g3, pushing the queen back. And if he plays something like knight f6, you can take this pawn and continue with your normal development. Both these lines are generally better for white, so I wouldn't recommend these for black. So what are the best strategies for black to decline the king's gambit? One of the most solid ways to decline is bishop to c5. This is what we call the classical defense. Black's plan is to use this bishop to prevent white from castling. Taking this pawn would be a blunder because after queen h4 check, if he blocks with g3, then we have this check and the rook is gone. And in this position, if he moves his king to e2, then queen e4 is a stunning checkmate and that's game over. This is what we call the idiot trap. So this is something you should definitely not be playing as white. But what you should be doing is hitting that like button below this video right now. Anyway, in this position, as you saw, white has to control this square. So knight f3 seems the best move. Now here, black should not take this pawn because after d4, white gets what he wants. He has these two central pawns. He attacks the bishop, so it has to move back. And eventually, he can take this pawn as well. This is a typical setup for white in the king's gambit where he's dominating. He's got the center, he's ahead in development, and he can prepare a systematic attack against the black king. Anyway, that was e takes on f4, which is probably a mistake by black. What if he plays knight c6 to defend this pawn? You might think white can simply take this, right? Well, not exactly. We have a crazy line that can turn up. Black can actually take this pawn. After knight takes, this h4 square is not defended anymore, so we have queen h4 check. King e2 would be a checkmate, so he blocks with g3. Again a check. This time white blocks with the queen. Queen takes rook, but now this e file is wide open. So white can give a discovered check and ultimately pick up the rook. As it turns out, this is slightly better for white, so this is an interesting line that you must know. Anyway. Let's go back and look at the best move that black can play in this position. And that is d6. This is probably the move you will most often see. Black adds a defender to this pawn and more importantly, he opens up this diagonal for the bishop to attack on white's king side. White can go with something like bishop c4 and target this f7 square. Or he can also play knight c3 and continue with his development. But I feel a better way to play this as white is to play c3 with the idea to push d4 and attack the bishop. d4 is a key move for white in the king's gambit, especially after black takes this pawn. c3 prepares for d4, which blocks off this diagonal for the bishop. And that allows white to prepare for castling. From here, black can also start putting pressure on this d4 square with his knight. After d4, the fight is on for the center. I'm not getting into the details because there could be many possible moves from here, but the purpose of this video is to show you how you can play this as black or white. As black, you can start opening up the center. Try and keep the bishop along this diagonal. Try to castle and get your king to safety. Your queen and bishop can come out this way to attack the king side. As white, you should look to get this knight out. Even if you can manage to trade your knight for this dangerous bishop, it's a good exchange. Both these bishops might probably have to come here at some point to defend these pawns. You can castle on the king side and then get the rook on this f file to launch an attack on the black king. Alright, so those were the main ideas and strategies when black plays bishop to c5. And that's a solid way for black to respond. But if you're an attacking player and you want some adventure, then you must try the Falkbeer counter gambit. What is that? Well, after the king's gambit, black counter attacks with the explosive move d5. This will make your opponent fall off his chair. It's something that a King's Gambit player would hate to see as white. And if you don't enjoy being attacked for merely a pawn advantage, then this d5 move is a really good option for you. Let's see how. Look, as white, I am expecting you to take this pawn, but black just offers one of his own pawns. 
Now, White cannot attack straight away and that's what makes him uncomfortable. This is exactly what you want. Surprise your opponent and throw him off track. Now, suddenly, White has a decision to make. Which pawn does he take? Taking the e5 pawn is a blunder because of the same queen h4 check that we saw earlier. That's why White has to take the d5 pawn, which is probably the best move for White. Now here, Black has two good options. He can take this f4 pawn, which leaves us with this kind of a funny position where both White and Black have doubled pawns on the d and f files respectively. White again is forced to play knight f3 to safeguard this h4 square and then knight f6, increasing pressure on the center. Taking with the queen is not such a good idea because white can push knight c3, attack the queen and gain tempo. Therefore knight f6 is the main move. This position is similar to the modern defense in the accepted line. If you look at the modern defense, black accepts the king's gambit, knight f3, d5, black gives back the pawn and ultimately we reach the same position. The good thing for white in this position is that he has the option to choose which variation he wants to play. He can play c4 and defend this pawn or he can bring out his bishop to any of these squares and prepare to castle. He can play d4 as well, open up the center and attack this f4 pawn. He also has the option of developing the knight to c3. So white can basically decide how he wants the game to proceed. He can expand in the center and castle and eventually he can pick up the f4 pawn. For black, he has some interesting options as well. He will obviously go after this central pawn and eventually he should be able to eliminate it. Also, this e3 square can be a good outpost for the knight, especially once this pawn moves forward. Black is slightly behind in development, so castling and getting the king to safety is always a good option. These bishops will generally come out from here, and as black, you can attack with all these pieces along the king side. Basically, as black, you just need to develop normally, no fancy moves, and you should have a good game. Alright, let's go back. Another interesting way in which black can proceed is not to take this pawn. Instead, just simply move this pawn forward. The idea is to grab some space in the center to control these two important squares and prevent the knight from developing in its usual way. This indirectly makes the king vulnerable to the queen check since the knight cannot control this square. Therefore, as white, you need to get rid of this pawn as soon as possible. So a move like d3 can help you exchange it. One of the lines could be to take this d5 pawn with the queen, but then you can simply play knight to c3 and develop with tempo. Another option for black is knight f6, defending this pawn and also attacking on d5. If white takes, then knight takes back and white can finally get his knight to f3. Black can go with the same idea, bringing out the bishop to prevent white from castling and also attacking this weak f2 square. As white, your focus will now shift to this open e5. Queen e2, this knight is pinned, black has to defend, so bishop f5, knight c3 adds another attacker, queen e7 adds another defender, and as you can see, this becomes a very complicated game, but still, both sides have a good chance of winning this. Anyway, let me just quickly show you another variation which black might play, and that is c6, the Nimzovich counter gambit. White just needs to be a little careful here. Don't take this pawn, just simply play queen e2 and white is already looking in a strong position. The king is in the line of attack so just open up the center and go after the king. It's an ideal game for a king's gambit player. A few more variations, although these are not that great for black but nevertheless you should be knowing them. What about knight c6 defending this pawn? It's kind of a waiting move where black wants to see what you want to do. Well nothing special required. Just get your knight out as usual and continue with the same strategy as you would normally do. Another move from black you might see is d6. Well, you can continue with knight f3 as usual or an even better move could be d3 consolidating the center and defending this pawn. Any which way, this is like your normal king's gambit setup that you are expecting to play as white. Alright, so here's a tricky puzzle for you all. It is white's turn and you need to checkmate the black king. Do share your answers in the comment section below. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out this King's Gambit accepted video which is showing up on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.